Good evening, everyone. Okay, welcome. We're glad that you all are here this evening. Please stand and we will begin our worship together. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first lesson today is from Isaiah. O oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. The cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Praise Thanks be to God. We will now read part of Psalm 23 responsibly by whole verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And leads you beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from Philippians. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you, Odia, and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, 
let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Lord, Lord, you, Lord Christ. Christ. Once more Jesus spoke to the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Please be seated. Sometime around the year 55 AD, St. Paul penned a letter to the church in Philippi from his prison cell in Ephesus. From the time he had founded that new little community of Christ followers, it had been beset by troubles. According to New Testament scholar Calvin Retzel, the church was hounded by outsiders and fractured by the pettiness and jealousy of insiders. But despite some opposition in that community, Paul maintained a warm relationship with the Philippians who supported his mission generously. His letter to the Philippians, from which we read today, was written in response to a letter that they had sent to him. We do not have that letter, but we do know something about what was in it. In addition to expressing their concern for Paul's well-being, as well as for a servant that they had sent to him to help. They also report that there are two women in the congregation who were fighting. I would hate to be remembered as Eodia <laughs> and Syntyche are. And that they are, as a community, concerned that they are being attacked from the outside and undermined internally by false teachings. They write to Paul about all of their troubles. Now, I did not need all of this background information in order to be comforted by this fourth chapter 
from the letter to the Philippians. But knowing the deep struggles of both the author, who was in prison, and his audience, who were in turmoil, makes these words even more extraordinary to me. Rejoice always, Paul said. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything but in everything. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Here we have an assurance from within the midst of conflict and confinement and confusion. Travails that span the centuries to meet us here where we need the same encouragement. Rejoice always. Rejoice always for the Lord is near. And yet it's not an easy thing to do, is it? Conflict makes us defensive. Confinement leaves us feeling impatient and aggressive. Confusion causes us to lose focus on our priorities. And just as soon as we lose our cool and let slip our joy, that peace of God which surpasses all understanding becomes elusive, leaving our hearts and minds defenseless to the chaos of life. So Paul reminds the, those beleaguered Philippians where to put their energy, to lean toward whatever is pure, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. If there is anything, any excellence, he says, and if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things. Now we know that Paul's letters were often copied and distributed to wider audiences, but we have no way of knowing whether his letter to the Philippians might have reached that community of early Jewish Christians for whom the Gospel of Matthew was written. Some 25 odd years later, this group is struggling mightily with some similar but different conflicts. By their time, the Romans have destroyed the temple in Jerusalem, a fate which many interpreted as God's judgment upon the Jews. And though this community was mostly made up of people who were born into Judaism, their faith in Jesus had created such division with their own people that they had been expelled from their synagogues. So Matthew's gospel is written to a people who are grieving, angry, and afraid. And it shows. The parable of Jesus that we read today in Matthew's gospel reflects not only the teachings of Jesus, but also some probable embellishments. Read the same parable in Luke's gospel and you'll note that the violence is missing. The invited guests are the same, too busy and too distracted to attend the banquet. And so the host sends out the slaves to bring in the blind and the crippled and the lame, or the good and the bad, as Matthew says. But in Luke, no one dies, no cities are burnt, no one is cast into darkness. Yet back in Matthew chapter 22, in the midst of telling the story of Jesus' conflict with the temple leaders and their ultimate betrayal that will lead to his execution, it seems that our author might have temporarily lost his cool and lost his focus. Forgetting, for example, his own chapters 5, 6, and seven, the Sermon on the Mount. 
Matthew's embellishments here, burning cities and outer darkness suggest a limitation of God's grace that is otherwise inconsistent with the rest of this gospel. So what are we to do with such a parable? Well, we struggle with it. It's a hard one. But I want to go out on a limb today and suggest that perhaps we can treat it with some compassion and empathy and listen like we would to a good friend who is hurting and afraid when we sift out the emotional overlay to find the truth that lies underneath. Because Jesus' teaching is there. And it is perfectly in line with the prophetic tradition of Scripture. Like what we read today in Isaiah, who proclaimed centuries before, on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And Isaiah goes on to say, And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. And listen again because this sounds like Paul. Let us be glad and rejoice. Rejoice in his salvation. The theme continues on. In the Psalms, Psalm 23 that we read today, the psalmist who sings to the Lord, You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So Jesus picks up on these long-standing visions. And in his teachings, not only describes the abundance of the banquet and the generosity of our host and the repeated invitations that will go out to all people, but then in this gospel, he also adds an important reminder that I think we need to hear. You see, in those ancient times, the wedding garment, the one that that one guest was not wearing, would have been provided by the host. The garment was a symbol of the marriage celebration, a sign that everyone there is committed to this community, to this feast. And it was a gift bestowed upon each one by the host. So presumably Jesus is presenting us with this character, a mirror image of ourselves, those of us who deny the grace that is provided to us. So the heavenly banquet is not going to be like a sit-down restaurant where we get to go in and order off the menu only what we want, what we pick out, and where the customer is always right. That's not the heavenly banquet. Know that our attendance at God's banquet table will come with some expectations, some commitment on our part. God's grace and salvation will transform us from the inside out. And so a question is asked of us. Will you be willing to accept God's change for you? Will you accept the grace that is extended to you and commit yourself to this feast? Will you come in and fully be a part? If you're not willing to be changed by grace, you will indeed find yourself in that darkness 
where conflict and confinement and confusion reign, where they distort who we are and prevent us from seeing and rejoicing in God's goodness. Among other problems, we're just not very good witnesses to God's grace when we are caught up in that darkness. So don't let the darkness distort our witness, but instead choose another way. Accept the invitation, show up, and dress out, as our gym teachers used to say. <laughs> yes, you got to dress out. As Paul reminded the Philippians, however difficult the present circumstances, we need to be preparing ourselves for the banquet to which God is inviting us every day. God is spreading that table before us, even in the presence of those who trouble us. And as the Song of Solomon also says, he invites us into the banqueting hall and his banner over us is love. Always love. So that is why even now we rejoice always. Knowing that the Lord is near, we give our attention. We lean in to truth and honor and justice and righteousness and peace and joy. These things are our wedding garment. And it is time to get dressed. So we offer our t prayer today that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to stand as we proclaim our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look, we look for the, for the resurrection, resurrection of the dead, dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Larry, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God, for a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I 
ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for Johnny, Rod, Nikki, Betty, Witt and Kaylee, Claire, Jennifer, David and Candace, John and Sharon, Sharon, Pat, Michelle, Michelle, Rebecca, Sherry, Brenda, Linda, Martha, Finn and family, Pat, Kristen, Rose, Gary, Linda. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. <laughs> well, again, I want to welcome all of you here this evening. It, it really is wonderful to have this opportunity to see you even if I only see half of you. <laughs> I'm grateful that you're here tonight. A um, couple of things I want to share with you. Uh, we are coming up toward the end of, well, we're halfway through October now. On November 1st, Daylight Saving Time ends, and that will mean that it'll be dark at this hour. So November 1st, our times will shift. We'll have services at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. So we'll have two more Sundays at this time at 5.30, and then we'll shift to 8 and 11, November 1st. You will receive an email this week from me detailing some information and reminders about what guidelines we are following to keep our community safe as long as the coronavirus is a threat to the well-being of our people. So look for that this week, uh, but just be aware that things will continue to shift. It's good for us to remain flexible and resilient. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Margaret and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thank 
world is so hungry, but we hold the bread of life. Surrounded by darkness, but we know the name of light. In a day so divided, we have a love that of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 